welcome to the webinar today. We're going to cover the basics of building an organization using Blackboard. Um, we're going to be talking about the navigation and control panel, the interface itself, how to build your course using the tools that are available, and how to personalize your org, the menu and the banner, add content, and use some communication tools to the best of your advantage. Also, how to manage your enrollments. Um, the difference, the main difference between an organization and a course in Blackboard is the ability to manage your enrollments. Um, all courses come pre-populated with student enrollments from the registrar's office. Um, but in organizations, the leader of the organization has the ability to enroll and unenroll members in the organization continuously. So that's the, that's the biggest distinction between the two. So an organization is something that you have complete control over of uh, who can come and go and be a member of your organization. So first of all, I'm going to actually send out a file to everyone so that you have a copy of the outline that I'm going to be following today. And this is just a PDF document that I'm sending out to you. So go ahead and um, answer yes when you get a pop-up on your screen. We'll ask you to accept that file. Um, it's, uh, again, it's a copy of the outline for today's, today's webinar. <clears throat> and then I'm going to move right over to the interface and we'll get started taking a look at that. So the first thing you're going to need to know is how do I get how do I get an organization created? So the first thing you need to know is the URL that you're going to be able to find all of your information about Blackboard, whether it's courses or organizations, is ole.sandiego.edu. Ole.sandiego.edu, and that's on the handout that I just sent you. <coughs> And you'll also be interested in the mobile app, which is at the App Store for uh, iDevices, iOS devices, and is also available for Android and for BlackBerry. So check those out when you have a chance. So to request your org, you're going to click on this link here where it says Faculty New Course Request. And that is going to bring you to a form that looks like this. Your contact information will be pre-populated at the top part of the form, and then there'll be a series of questions and information that, is, yeah, that you are asked for. The first is, have you attended a training workshop? And then the next question is going to ask, um, are my, I am requesting a course or, a, or an organization. And here's where the distinction is made. So once you request your organization, just enter the name of your org here. And we do have some drop-down menus where you can help us to track who's using these features. Just select from the drop-down. And then also the duration. If this is something that's only going to be used for a short period of time, you can choose one of these um, uh, d defined periods of time, or you can choose indefinitely. And that means your org will remain open until you decide to, to close it. In the additional comments box, you can add what the title of your org should be. If you have any other comments that you think the server administrator should know, go ahead and enter them in the box here and then click on Submit and allow up to three business days for your org to be created. So to get started, let's go ahead and log in. And you'll notice that there are two pods. One is your My Courses pod, and one is your My Organizations pod. But you'll be able to follow along with this regardless of whether or not you're enrolled. Um, so I have created an org called uh, BB Organizations Training Workshop that I'm going to use for today. <coughs> And when I enter the org, you'll notice that it looks exactly like a course, maybe with some coloring differences. Um, orgs, by default, have a different color menu on the left navigation. In courses, it's blue. And in orgs, it's the more orange color. The interface is very much the same as it is in the Blackboard courses. Your navigation menu is always on the left. The control panel is beneath that. And your content areas are in the larger panel on the right. For those of you who aren't familiar with Blackboard courses at all, there's a couple things that I'd like to point out to you. Um, first of all, the collapsible left menu. This has been um, a problem for some individuals who have logged into their Blackboard course or their org and um, have not been able to see the menu. And this happens from time to time. You may log in and see this and see no menu. And if that happens, hover to the left edge of the content frame until you see the green bar and just click on that and your menu will reappear. 
Um, and if you want to look, uh, if you're looking to have more real estate to work in the content frame, you can collapse it by clicking on the green bar again. So just a heads up, and you might want to let your members of your organization know that that is something they should be aware of as well. Um, getting to the menu, this is completely customizable. All of the navigation buttons can be renamed, deleted, and you can add as many content frames as you like. Um, for instance, let's use this plus sign in the upper left hand corner to add another content area. I can call this anything I like. And I would like to make it available to the users. And then click on Submit, and it will be added to the bottom of the list. If you'd like to reorder the list on, uh, of the menu items themselves, just hover to the left until you see the four-way arrows, and then drag and drop the button to a new location. You'll notice that the new item I just created has a gray box. That indicates that there's no content in that in that content area and therefore is not available or visible to the members of this org yet. Once you add content, then that will become available. As with the courses in Blackboard, you have edit mode, which is your build mode, and then you have display mode, which is mostly a student view. Not exactly a student view, but it's pretty close. So edit mode off is a good way for you to check and see how the content is being displayed once you are done creating. When you're adding content or building your org, you're almost always going to be working with edit mode on, and that's how you see all the features. So we'll start with the announcements. Announcements area um, is my top button here. And I've got an announcement that I created for today's course, just talking about the uh, learning objectives that we'll be going over today. Um, very simple to create a new announcement. Simply click on the button in the upper left corner of the content frame. And then just enter the information into the text box. And click on Submit. Oops, and I didn't fail to determine whether it was always available or whether dates were required. So I'm going to say this is not date restricted. I'm going to just have this announcement viewable at all times and click on Submit. Announcements are always posted with newest on top so that they're in a reverse chronological order. That means that anything new is always going to be at the top of the screen and in the most prominent location. When you're in a content area, so announcements is kind of an, is a separate sort of tool. It only allows you to create announcements. Um, but other content areas will allow you to add content of different and various types. So for instance, if I go to About This Org, um, here I've added an item. And this item has an attached document, which is the agenda or the outline that I've, I have previously sent to you and also has some text. An item can also contain images. Um, so an item is the most versatile type of content to add to a content area. Most often, we find that um, individuals are trying to add folders and files within those folders. Um, and you can do this also within a content area by hovering over the build content and then creating a content folder. To create a folder, the only item you need to complete is the asterisk item, and that is the name of the folder. You don't have to add any other information at all, and just make it available to your users. And now you have a new folder within the content area that's called About This Org. And again, with items, when you um, items in a content area can be reordered in the same manner that the left navigation items can be reordered. Just hover until you see the four-way arrows and then drag and drop. To add files to your folder, first of all, you want to click into the folder. And then you go to Build Content and select File. Again, you need to give it a name. And then just browse for that content had some dummy files here that I prepared in advance, but it's not taking me directly to the folder, so bear with. And 
say I'm going to put this, uh, this file within this folder, make sure it's available to my users, and click on Submit. So now I have one file within the folder about this org. There are a couple of other ways in which you can upload content um, in larger quantities instead of uploading a single file at a time, for instance, or creating a single folder at a time. There is a way to upload a zip file that already has your file structure created within it. So for instance, on my hard drive, if I have all my course content within a folder organized the way I want it to be organized, I can upload that all at one time using a zip file. So let me show you what I mean by that. Here I have a content area, and I've got a couple of files here already, but I'm gonna, I, I have another zip file that I want to add to this collection, and there's several files and folders within that. So I'm going to go to Build Content <coughs> and select Document Package, and then it tells me here that I need to select a zip file. So I have my zip file ready to go. And I have it right here, course content.zip. And then I click on submit. And now I've got course content right here. And when I click on course content, within that I have all the files and all the folders already set up inside of this, just the way I had them on my hard drive. So if you have a large amount of material that you are planning to upload into your org, this could save you a lot of time just by organizing the material ahead of time and then putting it in a zip file. There's other types of content that you can add to your org as well. Let's talk about a couple of things that seem to be really popular. And let me go to an area where there's not so much clutter. So one of the things that is new with Blackboard 9 and seems to be very popular is the YouTube video. And the reason that this is so um, popular, I think, is because you can direct your, your uh, members or your students to a video without having them taken out to a separate site. So they're going to be able to watch this as it's embedded in the page and not be taken out to the YouTube site where they'll be distracted by all kinds of other videos that um, will take them off task. So I'm going to search, for instance, for University of San Diego commercials because we know there's a couple of those out there. And click on the Go button and see what comes up. And here, I believe, is the one that we we're wanting to, we want to select. This is the commercial, I believe, from the Super Bowl this year. So I've selected my video. You could also preview it before selecting it if you're not sure that you've selected the correct one. <coughs> and then scroll down to item number two, <coughs> excuse me, under mashup options. In this drop-down menu, you have the ability to choose embedded video. And by doing that, you make sure that, that that video plays right within your Blackboard page. Again, make it available to your users and click on Submit. And now you've got a video right within your page. And I'm not sure how that will display for you using Collaborate. It probably is not going to play very fluid. <laughs> so I'm going to stop that. But you get the idea. So Blackboard does offer several different types of communication tools. One of those is Collaborate, and that's what we're using today to deliver this webinar. <coughs> so within Blackboard, you now have the ability to launch a, a webinar, a live meeting, a live group collaborative um, a project or meeting time a committee. All kinds of events like that can now be held in Blackboard using Collaborate. It's very powerful. You can share slides. You can share desktop applications. Um, there's file sharing, video and audio chat. So do check that out when you have a moment. And we also do teach uh, one-hour workshops on how to use Collaborate and get started with it if you're interested. Other types of communication tools include, as we've already seen, the announcements tool. And the announcements tool automatically sends an email notification to all the individuals or all the members that are enrolled in your org. 
So that is kind of um, a nice thing about the announcements tool is if you post something there, then you can be assured that each of your members has received an email notification about that announcement as well. <coughs> There's also an email tool. And the email tool in Blackboard is a little different than the email tool was in WebCT. So for those of you who are moving to the new platform and are used to WebCT features, I'll just tell you that the email feature in Blackboard uh, simply acts as a launch pad for your email. You can create your email here. You can select the roles um, that you wish to send to. So for instance, if I would like to send an email to all the participants in this session, I can do so simply by clicking on that group and then creating, um, creating an, a, a message to send them. Just enter a subject and then your text. You can also add attachments if you like. You can attach a file just like a regular email and click on submit. And when you do so, that email leaves the Blackboard platform and it goes to their at sandiego.edu email address. Um, Blackboard keeps no record of any sent messages, but the sender does get a copy of the email in their sandiego.edu mailbox as well. So everything leaves the Blackboard system. Um, if you're interested in having your messages and mail stay within the Blackboard system, then you want to use a tool called messaging. Messaging can be found under the organi organization tools menu in the, con in the control panel. Simply select messages and then you would just create a message. Be sure to add the tool to your menu so that your users have the ability to use that as well if you so choose. And to add a tool to the menu, you're simply going to select tool link and give it a name. And then from the drop down menu, choose the item that you want to make available. And a tool link is a little different than a content a content area because it's very specific and it contains only the tool that is going to be used. And now all of your users would have the ability to message one another within the Blackboard system. Also in organizations as well as courses, you have other communication tools such as blogs, journals, um, there are actually wikis. So things that are very collaborative and different uh, ways of having your members either track their, track their progress with a project or communicate with other team members and keep everyone up to date. Another feature that is um, very popular and very handy is the groups feature. So under users and groups in the control panel, you can select to create groups. In this case, I've created three groups already. And the members of these groups, let's see, I want to be able to show you what this looks like from a, from one of the group members' perspectives. So I'm going to log out as, as myself and I'm going to log in as a student that I've entered into this org. And when I go into the org as a member or a student or participant, I can see that over on the left, left navigation, I have my groups. And I'm a member of event coordination group number one. And when I click on that, I can see the tools that are available for my group to use in order to accomplish um, what we've been tasked with. So for instance, we can share files using the file exchange. We can keep blogs, have discussion boards, journals, um, even create task lists so that we can um, keep track of who's doing what and what still needs to be done, uh, create wikis, emails. So all of these things are available to the, the group to use, and they are private to that group. Each group will have its own set of tools like this, but, but the, uh, they can only be seen by the members of each individual group and not shared with the other groups. So one thing that's really important to show you is how to manage your enrollment in your organization. So I'm going to log out as a student and log back in as a leader, which is what an organization um, manager is called. And I'm going to go back into my org. 
So if I want to see the members of this organization, I'm going to go to Users and Groups <clears throat> and click on Users. This gives me a list of everyone that's enrolled, and I can tell by looking at the role column what type of a participation uh, permissions each of these individuals has. Participants in an org is very similar to a student role in a course, and leader, as I said, is comparable to instructor. The leaders have the ability to manage the enrollment in the org, and so let's talk about how you get your, your members into your org. If you have one or, two, one or two members that you're starting off with and you'll only be adding a couple at a time, it's probably easiest just to use Find Users to Enroll button to, to enroll your members. By clicking on this and then entering the username, for instance, Allison's not here today, so I'll enroll her in this group. And click on Submit, and now Allison is enrolled as a participant in this org. Oftentimes with orgs, we're finding that there are a lot of members that need to be enrolled at once. And it would be a very painstaking process to click on this and enroll each member individually um, if you have several to do. So there is a way to batch enroll users, and this is probably what you would do initially to enroll the large um, portion of your users, and then you may have one or two at a time to add later as users join and leave the group. So let me show you how to do a batch enroll of your users. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send you another file, and that is a Excel template that is formatted in order to have the system accept your batch enrollment. So it's, an, it's a formatted Excel sheet that you will need to, um, you'll need to have in order to start entering my Excel document. OK, here we go. So this is the document that I just shared with you. I just sent, sent a copy to each one of you. As I said, it's pre-formatted, and there, the, the headings in each of the columns are as they need to be in order for Blackboard to recognize where to put this information and what to do with it. <clears throat> Um, so the username is the first part of the email address. It has to be an at sandiego.edu account. We cannot enter Gmail addresses or AOL addresses or anything like that. So this does have to be the USD ID. Um, then the user's last name and the user's first name and email address. The password field must be here, but you do not have to have any information entered here. And then the user role most likely is going to be S. S stands for student or participant, but you would use S in both cases. If you are going to enroll leaders um, to your organization, you would use the designation OL here. And um, I have a uh, blog post I can share with you that walks you through the process of this as well. So I'll share that with you in a moment. So I've pre-created this, this spreadsheet, how to upload that. <coughs> So here we are in the users area again. Control panel, users, you'll be in this interface. Batch enroll users here in the upper right will ask you for this file. So once you've created your Excel spreadsheet, you're going to save it as a text a tab delimited .txt file, and Excel allows you to do that. Just you do save as and then tab delimited .txt. So I've saved mine in that manner, and I'm just going to go here to select that from my, uh, from my files on my hard drive, and click on Choose. And then I select Tab in the delimiter type and Submit. <clears throat> and this is the result of my file upload. Now where it says Line 1 produced an error, that's because Line 1 is my headings. And so pay no attention to that. The other the other lines were uploaded successfully, and those were actually the enrollments that I wished to process. So it looks like everything was uploaded successfully, and I can go back, I can click on OK down here in the corner, and go back to my users area just to verify that, yes, indeed, these new users that I just added were successfully enrolled in the course. Now, at the end of a semester or the end of a uh, uh, club meeting times uh, or uh, time period ends for whatever this group has been created for. You need to unenroll some members of this group so that they will not be going forward. You can select the checkboxes at the 
um, preceding the username, and then using remove users from the organization, just click on that, and those users will be deleted. So you do have complete permissions for enrollments in the orgs, and that's really nice for you to be able to, to manage. Okay, so let's talk about customizing your org and giving it the look and feel that you, that you want it to have. So customization teaching style takes you to an area where you can select um, to choose some of the uh, look and feel components of your course. Number one asks you to select a course entry point or an org entry point. Um, in this case and by default, all the orgs have announcements as the org entry point. That means this is the page that all of the members will land on when they first enter the org. And it is also the only page on which your banner will be displayed. So if you notice, when I go to the announcements page, <coughs> you see a banner displayed at the top. And this is also the page that I land on when I come from the welcome screen into, into this organization. I land on the announcements page. So going back to customization and teaching style, if I change this, I can select any of the content areas that I have added to that left menu. So any of those pages can be designated as the course entry point. That will also change the page on which the banner is displayed, so just, just note that. The menu style can be changed as well. You can select to have buttons for your menu or just text. So you have the ability to change that, and as well as the colors and everything else that goes along with it. You can choose to have the menu uh, display in a list view, a folder view, and that is, um, that's this up here. That is how, like right now we have the list view, but you can change that to a folder view simply by clicking on some of these um, various display options you have at the top. You can choose whether you want to have icons and text for your content areas, meaning do you want the folders icon to show or do you just want the link to, the, um, to be in text. And here's where you can select and or change the banner that you have associated with your, with your org. You can upload a uh, banner from your hard drive. If you create one, we recommend that you do it in Photoshop and create it at a size of 800 pixels wide by 125 high. Um, any image, just save it as a JPEG and then upload it right here by clicking on Browse My Computer. And then just click on Submit to save your changes. So you can do a lot of customization by using that uh, teaching style area. One other thing you might need to do um, in the properties area under customization, there is one setting you might want to pay attention to. Uh, and that is, for instance, if <coughs> If you selected to have a definitive period of time for your org when you first requested it, say for example, when you filled out the org request form, you selected to have it available for six months. And after four months, you realize that this is going to be going, that this org is going to exist and need to be ongoing for a lot longer than that. You can just come into this area here and select continuous, and that will override that previous selection of, um, of six months or three months or whatever you chose in the first place. And continuous will allow your org to, to remain available indefinitely. You can also select a language pack here, probably not anything any of you are going to do unless you have a language club or something like that that will be using this org. And one other item that I'll show you in the control panel, and that will pretty much wrap up the overview for today, and that's the Grade Center. Most orgs aren't going to be using the Grade Center, but every now and then we are finding that Leaders need to track attendance um, to certain events. Maybe, maybe it's an athletic club, or maybe this is some sort of uh, com community, community learning group, and your participants are required to attend a minimum of two events or three events. The Grade Center can be used to do that. You can add columns. You can create a column. You can call it anything you want. Um, event one, for instance. And you don't have to give it any points possible. Even though there's an asterisk next to this field, you can enter a zero and just include in Grade Center columns. And then click on Submit. And you now have a new column. But I am not able to scroll in, there we go, <laughs> event one over here. And so you can this way track, you know, whether your students have um, have participated here or not. 
you can also change this to be, let's see, I wonder if you have, I'm thinking you can do yes, no, I guess not, it does have to be a numeric value. Okay. But you can use this for tracking. Maybe there are some components to your group that are, um, that are graded. Um, so you can use this area to do that anyway. So that was another item I wanted to, whoops, to show you. Also, your users are listed here just as they are under the groups and users section. And my screen just totally went blank on me. So again, full grade center, you can also see a list of your enrollment, your members. Thanks, everybody. I also um, just added the link to our blog post for those of you who are interested in that batch upload process. There's a step-by-step -step there. Thanks again for coming, and um, we look forward to hearing from you soon.